Welcome to Tyler's Tips. Today I'm going to talk about how we can use wide-angle lens distortion to help tell our stories. Okay, I love wide-angle lenses. I love the look that you can create with them, and I think it's a more accurate representation of the way that we as humans experience the world than tighter, more zoomed-in shots. So I love wide-angle lenses. I shoot with them all the time. I shoot lots of architecture, which is super wide a lot of the time. And I shoot uh, a lot of portraits and documentary shots of people with wide-angle lenses. But that comes with a lot of challenges because wide-angle lenses have a lot of distortion. So <clears throat> I wanna talk a little bit about how to use that distortion to help tell the stories. And you know, also how I like to try to avoid it in certain situations where I think it's, it can become a distraction or it can really fight your story. So uh, first of all, just to briefly talk about distortion in general, all lenses distort. They're taking you know, this world, a certain field of view of this world, and they bring it down into this flat you know, plane. Um, and as that light is bent you know, to make it all come into focus and come into this one little spot, it, <clears throat> it inherently distorts things. So the key is to get to know whatever lens you're using and understand what its distortion characteristics are. That includes an iPhone. iPhones have, um, they're great cameras. I love iPhone cameras, but they also, they do have significant distortion. Uh, with wide angle lenses, and the iPhone is a wide angle lens as well, you tend to see that distortion more around the edges. So what wide angle lenses do is they spread everything out. They create more separation in terms of, not in terms of focus separation, but perceived distance between the foreground and the background elements. They, they spread everything out. So in this case, I, one thing I wanna do, you'll see me looking down during this video because I have a little monitor underneath the camera and I'm gonna, I put a zoom lens on the camera so I can talk about this framing that I did for this uh, Tyler's Tips video uh, and how I'm using the wide angle lens distortion and, and not using it uh, <clears throat> to tell the story, just as an example. So you will see me looking down a lot during this it's so I can see where, what I'm doing with my hands. Uh, so this is a moderately wide field of view. It's about 30 millimeters on a 35 millimeter, excuse me, a 35 millimeter camera. That was hard to say. 30 millimeter field of view on a 35 millimeter camera, for those of you who care about that. Um, <clears throat> And you see some distortion, like if I put my fingers and hands near the edges, you can see they stretch out a bit. And my arms kind of look a little long when I get too excited with my, gest my gesticulations. And, wow, I'm having a hard time articulating gesticulation. So anyways, coming back to wide angle lenses, <clears throat> I've chosen this field of view because I feel like it's a good trade off considering the story I wanna tell. For this series of videos, the goal is to share these ideas about creating more interesting photos and techniques and ways to make photography easier. And I love the backdrop of a working photography studio for that. So, you know, it is what it is. I don't clean it up when I do these videos. I let it just be, you know, what it is. Um, and I want that context. And to get a lot of that context, you know, I have to shoot wide up to a point. And uh, with wide angle lenses comes distortion. So this field of view, for my taste, and this is all very subjective, but for my taste, I can live with the distortion that you see as I gesticulate. Um, that level of distortion is okay with me, considering that we, it allows us to get all this, um, all this context in here. So to exaggerate this, I'm just gonna zoom out with our zoom lens. So now it's, I'm standing in the same spot on the floor, the camera's in the same spot, but look how small I am compared to where I was before. So we do have lots more context, that's great, um, to create you know, sort of a nice comfortable size for my face in this video, I gotta get a lot closer to the camera. So now, look at how crazy the distortion gets. It exaggerates everything, right? <clears throat> and you can see the exaggerated distortion in all the things in the room. You can see my piece of foam core that I use to block the light from this window that comes in and fills in the shadow too much. 
you can see my couch, all kinds of, and some of that's good stuff. I don't know, the ceiling's kind of not that cool. We don't really need to see that. You can see more of this great floor in here, which I love, <clears throat> but it introduces this crazy distortion, right? And so when I start talking and just gesticulating, because I'm excited about shooting with wide angle lenses, I love it my hands start to get really distracting. Like that, that visualness, it becomes too intense for my taste. Again, this is all very subjective. So, oh, before I zoom back out, there's one other thing I wanna talk about. I'm using this mostly as an example of where I, I don't feel like shooting this wide for me is a good idea with people. I feel like it's too wacky looking, too fun house. But for architecture, we shoot at this field of view and a lot wider um, all the time because I think there are a lot of elements in architecture that tolerate that distortion just fine, and it can actually be a big advantage. And an example is this couch over here. It's really distorted. It's at the edge of the frame and it's really stretched out, but it doesn't necessarily look like it's not a couch. Um, it's fine that it's distorted. It tolerates it much better than you know parts of the human body tolerate it. Like that's, look at my arm. Whoa, that's really weird. So. What this does, the couch does over here for our composition, it adds this wonderful leading line. That, and that line is exaggerated and made more dramatic, uh, which I think contributes dynamic energy to this image in a good way. Uh, so if it were an architectural image, I would, I love the distortion. If it's an image with people in it, I don't like the distortion. So let's come back to our sort of middle of the road position on this zoom lens, which is what I like for this composition. Again, we've got, we've got a nice amount of context. You can see that this is a studio. You can see, you know, two corners of the room, which really helps define the space. You know, you can see there's enough distortion that you get a really strong leading line down this side. Um, but it also, and if I back up to where I usually stand, it's around here. Um, it's more comfortable. There's that, that wackiness, you know, if I move my arms around, it's not as distracting that those, they're, they're not getting stretched out as much. Now, if we take that idea a little further and we zoom in, you get to see my beard up close. This is standing in the same spot. Now this is about 50 millimeters or so on a 35 millimeter camera. And <clears throat> we have a lot less context, right? Uh, but we also have a lot less distortion. So if I were to you know, make myself about the same size by backing up um, and sort of scooching down a little bit. Um, what you see here now is a lot less distortion, right? Like my hands don't get stretched out nearly as much. And, and that's a good thing, I think, in the context of shooting people, but it comes at a cost. And that is we've, we've lost a lot of context here. Um, and for my taste, again, it's all, it's my story I'm trying to tell here, so I get to choose. I don't like it. I don't like how we've given up a lot of the story. You can't see as much of the studio. We don't have this nice leading line. It's not as dramatic. Um, the, the foreground is less, less involved, less dramatic. It does have less distortion, but for me, the trade-off isn't worth it. So I like it to be about here, which is where I usually shoot these videos. Uh, <clears throat> so. There you go, an example of how you can work with wide angle distortion and make decisions to help tell the story. So next time you're out shooting, um, whether it's with an iPhone or a fancy camera with a wide angle lens on it, <clears throat> think about how you can make sure that distortion is helping tell the story you wanna tell and not introducing you know, problems into your photo that are fighting your story. So I hope this tip was helpful. And um, as always, if you have any, uh, <clears throat> if you have any challenges or ideas around photography that you'd like me to discuss in a future episode, shoot me an email and I'll work it in. Thank you for your time and I'll see you next time.